Greetings, Guardians. My name is Bifear. Well, looks like it's time for that spoiler warning. Yeah, go ahead and turn off the video if you don't want spoilers and if you haven't played through the final mission of Season of the Lost, because that is what we're going to be covering today. The Season of the Lost final mission is most certainly something relevant to the upcoming story of Witch Queen, if that wasn't obvious enough already, and if you've not played it and haven't had the cutscene skipped by Blueberries, uh, yeah, keep that in mind. You will want to go in, if possible, with a fire team of individuals that has not done it before. Otherwise, there is a chance that your quest progress is going to not count. You can replay the mission, so that's ultimately not necessarily a huge problem. But, yeah, that's a fair warning in advance. Try and go in with a group of friends who aren't going to skip the cutscene, because if one person skips it, it skips it for everyone. Which is a bit of an oversight by Bungie, but, I mean, dang. That's kind of rough. Either way, I'm going to go ahead and play all the cutscenes and all of the stuff that happened in the mission for you coming up and go ahead and give a little bit of extra context and other stuff going on around it. So, without much further ado, let's jump in. Of course, Season of the Lost is coming to a close, and that means that the final mission here is seeing the ultimate conclusion of everything we've been doing this season to try and build back Mara's coven of key witches. The key three Tekians, which we talked about previously in lore surrounding who are the Lost in the Season of the Lost, namely Elias, Yari, and Austin, they're all congregated and they are ready. The ley lines have converged and it's now time for them to extract the worm from Savathun. This is going to be one of those moments where things get a little bit dicey, because if you remember from previous instances, the convergences of the ley lines also means that there's going to be easy access for the forces of Shivu Arath and the Darkness generally into the Dreaming City. But that's not exactly where our mission begins, because it begins in the Helm, where we go ahead and we hear this quick message from Marasov briefing us on exactly how everything is going to go down. The time is at hand. The beacons shine bright and the ley lines are set in place. My Techians are prepared to perform the ritual that will separate Savathun from her worm. Although she claims she will help us in our fight against the Black Fleet and the entity that commands it, she cannot be trusted. You have coaxed enough information from her for my purposes. I will do what must be done. But know that Zivu Arath won't let her sister or her sister's worm go without a fight. I call on you once more, Guardian. Your knack for violence is needed. Make your final preparations and head to the Dreaming City. We will see you when you arrive. Following this, it's back into the Dreaming City and into a brand new instance of Astral Alignment that is very much different. For those of you who didn't notice, in the background of Astral Alignment, between each of the three ley lines, whether it was Vesta, Ceres, or Palace, you could see that there was a bridge forming to the central spire in the middle. And now, as you land in these ley lines, you're able to actually use that bridge to cross into the middle. With this, you're able to actually go and fight towards the Awoken position, and this long bridge is getting assaulted by the Hive. But that's not the only thing that you see. Take a look and take a listen. After millennia of insatiable destruction, they are powerless against my retribution. This is Zivu Arath's last chance to capture Savathun. She's dispatching all local forces to the Spire. Use the teleporters to join us as soon as you can. The roar of the Worm Gods is indeed here, which leads me to believe that the massive holographic green worm thing on the top of the spire is actually the projection of the influence of one of the three worms that is still alive, and this makes me think, perhaps, that this is Yul. Yul is noted to have been the largest of the three worms, and is also the one that made the pact with Aurash, Sathona, and Shiro back before they were the Hive, and before they became known as Aurix, Savathun, and Shivu Arath. Yul is seeing the pact that they made defiled, and is seeing one of the larvae that he gifted to the original Osmium dynasty now left to die. This is a moment where the Worm Gods are going to be furious. All the more reason for the darkness and all the more reason for Shivu Arath to go and fight all the more hard. 
to get everything sorted and to really push back the forces of the Awoken. But luckily, you're there, and you are able to go ahead and push through everyone who attacks you on the bridge. However, before you're able to see the final ritual commence, there are a few words shared between Mara, Savathun, and Saint-14. The ritual is about to begin! Hello, my love. Osiris admired your patience, but you look antsy to me. Having doubt? Doubt is a useful tool, but double-edged. Do not let it lead you astray. Ugh. Leave him be, and keep to your promises, or I'll let him drag you into Zilu Arath's waiting jaws. And then she would swallow you as well. Why must we threaten each other? I am merely clarifying my intent. It is time. Yelaya, Sajari, Austin, and Seth. We are sisters of circumstance, bonded by fate. Open those bonds to each other. Become one. Expel the parasite from our collective. This moment is simply the strike of a match. The fires we light here will burn long after. Be ready. Large concentrations of Zivu Arath's forces are closing in on our position. Protect the Queens. None shall enter! Roth's forces are converging on your position. Defend Queen Mara and the Techians until the ritual is complete. Fighting in this way, we do see all of the forces of the Hive, the Taken, and the Scorn in a combined assault trying to take down all of our forces. But a strong fire team of Guardians, Saint-14's Light, and the perseverance that comes with knowing that our enemy is within our grasp really does push us forward. You can actually see that these are the two bosses that we've been facing within Astral Alignment on the two-week rotation, one of them being Scorn and one of them being Taken. But when it gets to the time when they're weakened, they're joined by a third enemy, one that we've also faced. If you have a very long memory, you may remember six months ago, at the very beginning of the season, when we fought a Hive Knight known as Kelgarath. Kelgarath was the first enemy that we fought before we actually went ahead and interacted with Osiris in the Dreaming City and realized, of course, that he was possessed by Savathun. This was just before Mara encased Savathun in the massive crystal. And what's more, Kelgarath fought us again. Kelgarath here fought us in the Argus Scepter quest. He was the boss at the end when you actually grabbed Argus Scepter from the vault and also fell prey to its power because, let's be honest, Kelgarath has become a little bit of a meme at this point. He even has lore on him, which basically states that, well, he was consistently trying to fight in order to honor Shivu Arath because previously he had fought for Savathun and was now greatly ashamed of this. But, as per usual, a Hive Knight, no matter how exalted, is not exactly a threat to guardians that have killed gods. And so, with all of that, we defeat Kelgarath for a third time and tell him that no, this is decidedly not going to be the point at which he is able to conquer us. Who knows, maybe we haven't seen the last of Kelgarath after all. He's come back three times now and he hasn't exactly died in an Ascendant Realm, so it's entirely possible that we see more of him. Either way, upon his death and his defeat, the forces of Shivor Rath are expended, and from there, we then see the final moments when the exorcism of Savathun's worm comes to pass.
feel my sister bearing down on you. Your family is tenacious, if nothing else. No more than yours. My brother spent years suffering punishment for the path you made him walk. Finally, justice finds its mark. Let this be the end of it. Alas, the Witch Queen is not so easily defeated, something that we have learned the hard way multiple times now. However, it is strange to see that the Witch Queen has done something rather generous for us, which is that she kept to her end of the bargain. This is certainly not to say that she is our ally, but it is to say that once again she has used Osiris as a tool and in this sense, perhaps we're able to see a reason why it was Osiris that landed in front of us. You can go ahead and find a little bit more context on this when you see the audio log that plays in the helm afterwards. What happened? Savathun happened. The Techians believe she enacted a contingency spell the moment the crystal shattered. She transposed herself with another subject marked with a matching hive room. Osiris. Is he alive? He is. Very weak, but alive. The Techians have confirmed his identity. It's Osiris. No tricks. Do you have any idea where Samathun is now? We... do not. She could be anywhere. If it's any consolation, we do have one thing. What's that? We have Osiris. In a way, Samathun kept her word. To the letter. I'll be sure to send her my thanks. If what we hear from Ikora and Petra here is true, then it would appear that all of a sudden, Osiris served another purpose. Namely, the purpose of allowing Savathun to switch places with him. And more so than this, we then can see that Osiris might have been held in Savathun's throne world, considering that that's probably where she retreated to. Fascinating ideas but it's not entirely clear what's going on. However, what's more is that we see once again that Savathun kept to her end of the bargain, and not only did she return Osiris to us, but Osiris is alive. Saint-14 has more to say on this particular topic when you go and speak with him in the tower hangar. Osiris lives. Thank you, my friend. Savathun tried to bury him to use him like currency for bargaining. She wore his face and spoke with his voice, but they were not his words. I did not believe the Witch Queen would hold to her promise. I, I thought I would never see him again. He is lost in sleep. Without the light, it is difficult to know if he will recover. But he is safe. Yeah, I need time, Guardian. I will see to Osiris' care. When he awakens, I want my face to be the first he sees. Perhaps I will joke that now we are even. Salvathun has many enemies. But she has never faced Saint-14. We will find her. And this time, it is her who will be buried. Finally, we have the words of Mara Sov. 
Plans are fickle things. Two can view the same events and predict entirely different outcomes. I was outmaneuvered, and Savathun slipped through my fingers. I was sure that this path, these actions were absolute. But change is a prolonged effort. It requires application of steady pressure. There will always be backslides. Do not lose the summit in the climb. After Saint-14 returned Osiris to your tower, my Techians verified his identity. Savathun upheld her end of the bargain, and she did not escape unscathed. Her worm is mine. It will grant many insights, I am sure. The curse on the Dreaming City can yet be broken. Go home, Guardian. Prepare for what is inevitably to come. Her resolve did not buy her victory this day. Not victory truly. More so than this, there is an interesting question to be gleaned further, which is what is the fate of Sabathun's worm? And, perhaps more importantly, does it make an appearance in Witch Queen? Remember, there's something very interesting about these worms. The first worm that was ever discovered by Sathona and her father was actually washed up from the deep of Fundament's oceans, and it was also dead, but not dead enough to whisper to her. It had the sort of same latent abilities that the Ahamkara, Destiny's wish dragons, do. The ability to whisper to individuals even past death, this latent communication and influence that they can exert. I have a feeling that the worm has a part to play here, and I have a terrible feeling that we might still have some kind of connection to it even if Savathun has shed it. For now, though, we prepare for the imminent conflict. The conflict that everyone knew was going to happen. The conflict that lies ahead of us. We will face Savathun, and when we do, we will need all of our might. But this is nothing new, and this time we will have an advantage. At least, in some sense. After all, it's not every day that someone pisses off Saint-14 enough for him to personally devote a crusade to them, and I think that the Elixni can speak for themselves when they say that his last ones were rather historical and terrible in nature. I feel like perhaps if there is one advantage, it's that Savathun does not quite understand what she has gotten herself into. But then again, maybe she does. Seldom is she unprepared. Seldom does she not understand all the pieces on the board and the positions they can take to attain victory. I think we still have a lot of tricks to see from Savathun. But of course, that's all from me for now. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, go ahead and leave a like. We have a lot of Destiny content rolling out and content coming up very soon for other exciting projects that are going on. In particular, if you want to learn the story of Savathun before we encountered her, Go ahead and look out for Dynasty. Dynasty is the massive project that I've been working on. It is pretty typical nowadays for me to go ahead and do a massive project like this ahead of the release of a big expansion, but it's also something that allows us to really tune in on the story. But Dynasty is really special. We have 3D animation that has been done by Judd and Cinema Motions, and before he got hired by Bungie, Drexis Animations. So we have some fantastic visuals to show you, and perhaps more so than just that, we also have 177 pieces of art done by Metaworks, aka Ben, who is helping bring the moments of Savathun's story to life. This is a really exciting project, I can't wait for you all to see it. This is the biggest project we've ever done in terms of coordination and the total effort that's been put in by the team. It really is quite a remarkable feat, what they have done and I'm really excited to show it to you. We'll have a dev diary showing that off in a few days and giving you guys a little bit more context on it, but for the moment, that's all you're gonna get from me. If you wanna see more of that again, subscribe, hit like, tell me down below in the comments section. The tentative release date for that is the 21st of February. But, as per usual, know that your viewership is quite enough for me, and that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife. Parodasia Adastra. I'll see you, Starside.